Hi folks, how are you today? I'm Jazzy and I'm from Maya Sewing. Today we're going to talk about the Jazz 2. Uh, it's considered a quilting machine, but you can sew on it also. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about is the size of it. Uh, it's a nice machine. It is completely mechanical, so there are no computerized parts in this. So we don't have an automatic um, cutter uh, or an automatic thread cutter, but we do have, I'm sorry, a thread, a threader, but we do have a threader and I will show you how to use it later on. Um, the benefit of having the Jazz 2 is right here. We've got this very, very large opening, which helps when you're quilting. Uh, it's about 12 inches. It's very nice, uh, tall enough where you can roll up a quilt. So this is the benefit of the Jazz 2. All right, so let's get started. First thing we're going to do is turn the machine on. The button uh, and your plugs are all on the right side of the machine. We'll turn it on nice and easy. Makes a little beeping noise. Not too difficult. All right. First thing we're gonna do is make a bobbin. So I'm gonna lift up this, and we're gonna take off the top. And we talk about the stitches, we'll talk about them later and I'll show it to you. So I've got some thread, let's see. We'll put that on. All right, there is thing, one thing about the jazz that I like. It has a little peg where you can put on after you make a bobbin so your thread is standing up instead of lying down. But you can't make a bobbin that way. So we'll do it the old fashioned way and then we'll put this back on. All right. Let me stand so we can get this threaded. On your machine, it shows you exactly how to thread it. You will follow the directions and the numbers that it does so then it doesn't get. Um, Confusing. Hang on, let me flip it underneath. There's a little metal piece on the inside. You'll go through it this way, come this way, and then back out the other way. Uh, there is a diagram, so it's easy to follow. And then we'll catch it under here. And let's go around this. Let me get a bobbin, and we'll thread that. All right. Now I put the foot pedal on the table so it's a little easier for access for me. I'll move the bobbin over to the side. All right, and there we go. Nice and easy. All right, we don't need to fill it all the way. Um, and we'll pop that off. Okay, we have our bobbin. I'm gonna take this thread off and we'll change colors. All right. I'm going to use the peg so we can use the spool stand in a different manner, just to be different. You're still going to thread it the same way as if you were laying the, the thread down on this spool pin. So we go under, and then there is a piece under here. There's a little bar. It has to go under the bar around the little post come down and then around and up whoops and around your the, the take up lever let's come down there's a catch here at number five and there's a catch right in front of the needle all right so your needle threader is here let me come from behind I'll show you but then I'll have to thread it all right so this comes down and the thread will wrap around, sorry, it'll wrap around this little guy and then it'll come through. So let's do that. Sorry that my hands are in the way. Remember to put your foot down so then your threader can completely turn and grab the thread. Look at that. There it goes. I'll grab it with my scissors so you can see it. There we go. Nice. Put the foot back up to release the tension on it. All right, so now it's time for our bobbin. I always tell my students, P for perfect. So when you're putting it on, the thread comes off the left side. We'll drop it into the bobbin 
case. You want to hold the bobbin with your finger. You want to catch it at six o'clock. There's a little uh, slit and then we're going to come over to nine o'clock and you can see there is a little cut. You can follow that and then we just cut the thread. You know what I didn't show you? is how to take the bobbin cover off. I know that's kind of weird. Uh, this particular one, there is a black lever. It slides from left to right. And then there is a push. You can't see it on, on film, but it is a little corner. So the bottom left corner, you would push down. So you pull over and then push down at the same time. And this pops right off. All right, so we've got that. If you want to pull your thread up, you can, but we're not going to. All right, so with the jazz, too, excuse me, we have a variety of stitches. I'll put it up here so you can see it. We have 27 stitches. Your top stitches here are more or less some utility stitches and some, um, some decorative stitches, your stitches, sorry. The bottom from 12 to 27 are some knit stitches and some other decorative stitches also. Because this is a mechanical machine, we don't push buttons to change everything. On the right-hand side of your machine, right above your um, on and off switch, there is a dial. This dial, when turned either left or right, will show you what stitch you're on. So it corresponds with, with this. So one is your straight stitch. So I'll, I'll go to one and it's a straight stitch, which I think for right now, well, that's where we'll stay. All right, so up here on your dials, you have two dials here, left and right. The one on the right is for the width of your stitch. So if you're in your zigzag stitch, which is number two on your dial, you can alter the width of your stitch from practically zero, not moving it at all, all the way to seven, so which is seven millimeters. Also, while you're in a straight stitch, this will also move the needle. So I'm currently on seven millimeters, and if you notice the needle is here, I'm gonna turn it, and if you look, you can see the needle slowly moving over to the other side. On this particular dial, there's a dot between the three and four, and that is your center. On the right-hand dial, we go from, let's see, let's go all the way over here. We go from zero, and then there's a buttonhole, and then we start at uh, the length, one, two, three, and four. Okay, uh, four is still a very long stitch, that's four millimeters, so if you're quilting or sewing, you probably wanna do somewhere around two millimeters. And we'll put it at two and a half for standard sewing. If you're quilting, usually standard quilting is two millimeters, that is. All right, here in the front, we've got another dial, and this one is your tension dial. Uh, you will have to use that if you plan on doing any free motion quilting, but for standard sewing, you do not need to use that. All right, um, right now it is currently on four, and that's where it's gonna stay. So, let's get a piece of fabric. I chose a, a different color bobbin so we can look at it and see how our tension is also. All right, because this is also mechanical, your presser foot lever is on the inside. Some of our baby lock machines, it's on the back. This particular machine is on the inside, which is also helpful. All right, we also have on the left-hand side, which is right here, this is our, um, our cut. There's a little tiny blade inside where you can, you can cut your thread, so you bring them up and around and cut. Here we have numbers on this particular dial. This is a little different. This dial is a one, two, three, and, and zero. Uh, two has a line above and a line below it. And that is the factory setting standard 
presser foot pressure. So that gives you how much pressure is going into your foot. So if you want less pressure, say if you were doing very lightweight fabric, you might want to decrease your pressure. We're going to do a straight stitch. I've chosen number one on our selector. I'm going to put my foot down and we'll just do a straight stitch. needle up and we'll cut it to the side all right tension looks pretty good nice all right so now that's a standard straight stitch um, if you want to back stitch uh, prior at the beginning and the end of your stitch I'm sorry your seam forgive me this is what you'll do you put the push the lever down so this is your back stitch lever and we'll show you how that works so you would push this down and engage it and then use your foot pedal and as long as you hold your lever down, it's going to stitch. So, go halfway, and then I could put it in reverse and do a couple of back stitches, okay? So we'll leave it there for a second. Now, if we're in the middle of making something and you want to pivot, you can do two things. One, you can turn your hand wheel, which is on the right-hand side, and you would turn it towards you halfway, or you can hit this little, button right here where it's needle up needle down and it automatically drops the needle and then if I was done pivoting I could turn it back up so down for pivot and then I would lift my presser foot pivot and then I could continue stitching okay let's cut that off there we go all right so that's pretty easy. You can put up and down. I like that. That is very helpful for a quilter, especially if you're chain stitching. Now, what happens if you want to do something and you constantly want your needle to end in your stitch down? So say if you chain stitching really close and you just want to keep the needle down to keep it straight. There is a button right here and there's a little black triangle and a little white triangle. If you push that button, you get a little green light. And let's see what that does. Let me engage my tension. And let's see what it does. Halfway, and it stops. If I pivot here, stitch a little more, still going to end. When I stop, the needle goes down. All right. And then I can lift my foot with the button instead of having to do it manually. So that's a nice feature there. All right, our stitches look pretty good. All right, so now on this machine, we have a variety of stitches. So we have uh, quite a few choices. Uh, most people who buy the Jazz 2, they really use it for piecing quilt tops together, and then they also use it for free motion. And we will go into that. Let's talk about, uh, let's see what else. We've talked about the dials, we've talked about this particular piece here is your accessory box. It's currently empty. I've taken all the accessories out. And the back opens also. And that's also empty. I have a student that hides candy in it. So that's an idea for you. Um, this also comes off. So if you wanted to um, get a table from So Steady or from Baby Lock, you can add a table to make this surface much larger. I didn't bring a table for the jazz today, so we'll put this back on. There we go. All right. When you're changing stitches and you decide you want to do something different, all you do is turn that selector to the left or right. It can go either way. If you turn it away from you, the numbers increase. So, and then we're going to go over to stitch number 11. It's a satin stitch and it looks kind of like a leaf. It's here. Let's see what it, she can do. Now I've got the standard sewing foot on here which has a, a wide opening and then we can just leave it that way. So now I haven't changed anything on this. Remember we talked about the width and the length. Now the picture that it shows me looks like a leaf. What I just did does not look like a leaf. And I'll show you, and I'll show you why. Okay, I can't reach that. 
okay it looks like a standard zigzag okay well let's look back up here I've got my width of my zigzag at three and a half well first of all I'm gonna lengthen that and go all the I mean widen it excuse me to seven millimeters on my length I have it here which is two point well, 2.75. We're going to shrink that. And let's go all the way to 1 and see what happens with it now. Let's engage our tension. stabilizer so it pulled the fabric a little but you can see how it's creating that design that it showed you so it starts off small gets very wide and then goes back down but still we have openings and I'm at one now let's go a little further and see what she does this is why you have to learn to play with your machine when you first get a new machine you need to play with your stitches on it much better you can see now you really can see that leaf pattern so that's your satin stitch uh, and that's in a leaf form that's kind of cool looking uh, granted this is pulling the cotton you can see how it's puckering in here and if I turn it over you'll see it it's pulling the cotton when you do this kind of a stitch you need to do it th with heavier fabric or you need to put a stabilizer in between so but it's fun I want you to if you have a jazz too Turn it to every stitch and play. Don't, I give you permission. Just to have a lot of fun and play with it. All right. What I didn't show you when we was we, we were um, threading the machine and doing the bobbin is that the bobbin diagram. They put it on here also. You'll see how we follow it. So if you follow that particular way to make the bobbin, it's a whole lot easier than trying to figure it out yourself. All looking in your book. All right. Let's get ready to do some free motion. Okay, so before we actually go into uh, free motion quilting, I have to teach you how to change the foot. And we'll talk about accessories while we're here. I'm gonna just gonna dump them out. All right. We'll spread them out. With your Jazz 2, you'll get four bobbins. You get one that's already in, and then you get three additionals. You get an extra piece of felt, and that is for to put here to help with the spool of thread spinning when it's in this position when it's done. You get a combination seam ripper and brush to clean out dust on your machine and inside your bobbin case. You have an extra pack of needles. You have another spool cap. This is for larger spools. We have a variety of feet, and if you look in your maintenance, in your, I'm sorry, in your manual, you'll get the list of all your feet. Um, the foot where that we're going to use today is our free motion foot. We'll put that up. But to change it, we need screwdrivers. So they send, they give you a little tiny one, which is perfect for removing your needle plate to get the dust out. You also have this one. This is perfect for taking off the needle and removing the entire ankle. You have another spool cap, which is a small one, and another foot, and that is your quilting guide. They give you, huh? this is a little tiny screwdriver, which we're not gonna use that one. All right, I'm gonna use this one because it's easier to do. So let's talk about changing the needle. If you need to change your needle, you wanna grasp your needle, and then you want to turn it towards you and unscrew it and it'll come right out. To put the needle back, you want to do flat side in the back. You want to insert the needle as high as you can, push it all the way up and hold it. And then you can hand tighten it 
if you have strong fingers then just hand tighten it if you have weak fingers just a little tiny bit do not over tighten your screw to get your needle in because it can jam up and they would have to replace this whole piece okay so don't do that all right to take off the foot to change it let's say to our quarter inch foot there's a little black button and you push it in and the foot just releases okay and to change the foot you can do one of two things you can snap it up or you can use your presser foot lever and line it up and then it would lift that way another piece you get and i left it in here is your button holder okay that also comes with it all right all right i'm going to remove this foot and then i'm going to remove the whole ankle i'm going to use a screwdriver on the side and As soon as I loosened it, it fell. So in order for me to grasp that without stabbing myself, I'm gonna lift my presser foot up and just move it out of the way, okay? Now, this particular foot, you'll see where it slides in. This will go underneath, so it's underneath, let me point with my scissors, underneath the screw, and then we'll, we'll tighten it. This opening will be underneath your needle, and this bar here will sit on top of your needle bar. If you can't get it on, remember you can lift your presser foot up to get it under. Makes gives you a little bit more room, and then you can release it. All right, I'm gonna hold it up as far as it goes, and tighten it with my screwdriver, okay? So it does not move. All right, now, this particular foot, you do not wanna use your feed dogs. So your feed dogs are these teeth at the bottom that grasps your fabric. When you're doing free motion quilting, you don't want that. You wanna be able to move your fabric gently in the direction that you wanna use it. I am going to rethread my needle because I didn't. Hang on just a second, and we'll catch it under that little guy underneath here. And why am I not working? All right, let's try that. I don't think my needle was up all the way. Ah, it wasn't. If you ever try to thread your needle and you notice that it's just not threading, could be because your needle is not in the correct position. In order to do that, all you have to do is press the needle up down button twice so it'll go down and then come back to its highest position and that makes it a whole lot easier all right i'm going to clean up this mess now before we uh, get into the quilting part you have to take and drop your feed dogs now some machines the, uh, the computerized machines you can just push a button well, remember, I talked about this being mechanical. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is slide our accessory box over. And in the back, I'm gonna move this out of the way and show you. I'm gonna turn the whole machine around. All right. All right, so back here, we have a button. And you can see the teeth, and they're up on the black line. And here, the teeth are below the line. So in order for us to do free motion, we want to move it, and you can hear it, it makes a noise, and they go down. And now if you look closely, there are no feed dogs at all. They have disappeared. What that means is now it cannot feed the fabric. All right, let's turn this. Plug my foot pedal back in because it unhooked. There we go. And because I'm quilting, I'm either going to use a table or I could put the accessory box back in, which we'll do. 
All right. Before you start quilting on your project, it's a good idea to make some practice sandwiches like this. So I have a top fabric. I have, in this case, I have wool batting, and then I have a backing. And what you want to do is just, you want to mimic what you're going to quilt, okay? It's always good to test your fabrics. This is also good to test your tension, okay? Um, with the jazz, you will have to learn to adjust your tension. Um, don't be afraid of it, and we'll, we'll get through this, and I'll show you. Remember earlier, um, my tension was too tight, so I did decrease it. Um, I'm going to put it back up to factory, which is about four, and we'll see what happens with that. All right, so now remember, um, sandwiching, I'm not pinning. I didn't spray anything on this. It's just simple. Now, when you're quilting, uh, a lot of people will either use gloves or um, some kind of a, a hoop to move this around. Well, that would block everything so you wouldn't be able to see. Um, we're just going to leave it like this and I'll do my best. All right. So now, even though we have no feed dogs, you still want to engage your tension by putting your presser foot down. When you do that, you can see the springs here, and this whole foot goes up and down. This doesn't necessarily push the fabric all the way down and drag it, but if you were in standard sewing mode, it would help to push it down, but it also engages your tension. Um, you still need tension when you're doing free motion. You might not need free feed dogs, but you do need tension. So right now it's engaged. All right, and we've got red thread on the top still. Now, because this backstitch button is for backstitch, this only works when you have your feed dogs up. So I'm going to be the one to do a, a lot, we'll say. Okay, so I'm going to let the needle stay in the same position for three turns. One, two, three. And I forgot to turn back to one. Let me turn back to stitch number one. I don't want the needle going left and right. So what I did, and it did go back left and right. So it's okay. This is only a, a sample anyhow. So in that case, see, I didn't ruin anything. But I still want to go in the same space three times. So I went back to stitch number one, and you can see how it goes up and down. So that basically locks the stitch or reinforces it. Now, to move, if I didn't do anything, and I don't touch the fabric, it's just going to go up and down. If I don't move this, there'll be a, a big collection of thread underneath that piece, and it'll get jammed into your needle bar. I mean, into your needle plate, and it'll jam it up, and you'll have to cut it off. So let's, let's see if I can do this with my hand. I'm going to set it back just a smidgen. All right, let's see what we can do. All right, I'm not very good with one hand, that's for sure. Let's see how bad that was. My stitching is not good with one hand. All right, oh boy, that's really bad for me. <laughs> the stitches are completely not equal, all right? But that's not what I'm trying anyhow right now. Right now, I wanna see how my tension is. So I'm gonna turn it over. And if you look, that's my scissors. We have red thread popping up here and it's starting to eyelash here. So what that tells me is my top tension is too loose. So in that case, if my tension is too loose, so if my top thread, my red thread in this case, is showing in the where my bobbin thread is in the bottom of the quilt sandwich, that tells me that it's too loose. It's flopping a little bit. So in order to do that, I wanna increase the tension so it's tighter. So that means I'm gonna make the number higher, okay? So we're gonna go to five. I'm gonna have to put the foot pedal on the floor because I cannot quilt with one hand. All right, let's see if that's a little better. Back to the front side and we'll see what we can do. I'm gonna try a new spot, engage my tension. And let's do a reinforcement stitch. Okay, and now I'm gonna have to grasp the fabric. If I had gloves on it, I would have sticky pads and it would help a little bit. 
All right, so let's see what happens. Well, my stitching's a little bit better because I'm using two hands. I'm gonna pull this out of here and let's check the tension. Now with your jazz chew, you need to be patient. Don't get frustrated just because you can't get the tension perfect the first time. Now my stitches are a whole lot better, a little bit wide here, but pretty good in here. They're about two millimeter, which is pretty good. Now let's check the back. All right, the back, you can see it looks pretty good where I started it, but as I went, you can see, barely see, but right there where I can see some red thread. So it still looks like the tension's just a little bit too loose. All right, let's go up one number. And if it was showing a lot, I would probably jump up two numbers, but it's only one, so it's not too bad. The whole trick of free motion, honestly, the first thing is you have to practice. Don't expect the machine to do all the work. It's all about you. Um, you have to move the fabric. You have to control how fast it's going with your foot pedal. Uh, my suggestion, and I'll give you a little treat after what we can do to help with um, controlling your foot pedal. All right, let's try this again. Let's do my reinforcement stitch, one, two, three, and let's see how she works. All right. I didn't backstitch at the end because we're just testing tension. The reason I did a reinforcement stitch at the beginning is so I don't get a um, thread flying up in the air. All right, front still looks good. My stitches are pretty good. The back, ah, look at that. Now, that looks beautiful. And I, it only took me, what, one, two, three tries to get the tension correct. So right now, I'm just over six, headed towards seven, not much. I will give you a, a reminder. What, I, what you would do is save this piece of fabric and write on it with a pencil or pen or even a fabric marker saying that your tension was at six and whatever, two lines or three lines. So this way you can kind of remember what you did, okay? Another good thing to do is remember or mark on your machine where you do normal sewing, okay? So if your normal sewing is at a two where you're doing your piecing, mark it down or have a piece of fabric or write it on there and say normal sewing is my tensions at two, okay? All right, so that doesn't look bad at all. I'm really pleased with it. So I will tell you it takes time to learn how to do this. Um, we have lots of helps and, and there's all kinds of tips out there to help you to be a better free motion quilter. But the first thing you need to do is practice. All right, while we're here, um, I've told some other ladies who own a jazz too, I'm gonna put, pick up my foot pedal and show you something. Now this is a regular standard foot pedal, okay? Nothing fancy. People sometimes, and I've seen it happen, and I was the same way when I first started learning how to do free motion, is if I go fast, I'm not moving the fabric fast enough or I'm going too slow. And it's kind of hard to find that in between. My suggestion to you would uh, be get some heavy duty, like industrial uh, sticky Velcro. And if you have a friend or your significant other has pieces of wood, you can literally put a piece of Velcro here, put a piece of Velcro on here at the bottom. And then you can take um, the other side, the hook or the loop, depending what you put on the foot pedal. And this way you can put a piece of wood there so you're stopping the pedal from going a certain way. So no matter how hard I push, it's not gonna change. I'm gonna cut that because it's gonna get tangled. There we go. There are other machines that have it automatically, but the benefit of having a Jazz 2 and that no other machine really has is this wonderful space, this big long, this big sewing area, which is, I call it a sewing throw. So this is what you'll, this is why people buy the Jazz 2. It's this area here. All right, um, I think that's about all. All right. 
Well, let's wrap it up. And if you have any questions, you can call us at 719-596-1165. And have a great day.